In this problem, a bug is walking from the center out on a turntable that's moving at 78 rotations per minute. The farther the bug gets from the center of curvature, the greater the centripetal acceleration that's required to keep it on a circular path. And what's supplying the force to cause the centripetal acceleration is a static friction force. So eventually the bug gets to some radius r, where the maximum static friction force is exceeded and the bug will break loose and slide off the turntable. So here's the bug getting further and further from the center of curvature. I know that it's accelerating at any point toward the center of curvature. We're considering its outward motion to be slow and we're just trying to look at a moment in time where it happens to be standing. So now it's going to accelerate toward the center of curvature. And the, so this bug's going round and round like this at this particular moment. with a radius of r, and that's the unknown here. So the standard approach to this is to visualize from a perspective. And what I'm going to do is just put myself in this perspective looking at the bug. So there's an eyeball that's the sort of standard symbol for where your perspective is anchored. I'm going to look at the bug going away from me at that point and draw a new picture. So I'll put the center of curvature right here. And the bug is moving into the page right now, going away from me, because I'm looking at it from this perspective. And I should make an effort to be consistent with my color coding. I normally use, I think, green for acceleration vectors. So let's get that in there. And I know that the bug is accelerating this way toward the center of curvature. Okay, if the bug ends up walking too far out, it's eventually going to slip. So this is a break loose phenomenon. I know I'm talking about static friction here. That is our characteristic behavior for static friction. So when I start to look at the force diagram on the bug, gravity is pulling down. Normal force is pushing up. In this case, there are no other forces messing around with the vertical direction, so n is just going to be equal to mg. It is not always just automatically equal to mg, but if, if, it, if nothing else is messing around with the vertical direction, you're on a level surface, the normal force will just cancel the force of gravity. And then I look at the centripetal acceleration. So this is, again, a geometric fact. They go, in order for the bug to be moving on a circular path, it must be accelerating at all times toward the center of curvature with a magnitude of v squared over r. So, and, and that might be a little counterintuitive, but it's a fact. And then when I look at my force diagram, I go, okay, my acceleration points this way toward the center of curvature. Therefore, the force that's causing that acceleration must point towards the center of curvature, the same direction. And again, that's a static friction force. And what happens... Like just before this guy breaks loose, the static friction force is maximum. That's the case where I can use this formula for it. I'm just going to go ahead and put it right in here, mu s times mg. Okay, now I'm ready to apply Newton's second law. I already applied Newton's second law in the vertical direction. There was no acceleration. That's how I knew the forces were balanced. So now we're doing the horizontal direction. And one thing I forgot to mention here is that I would like to define the positive direction to be the direction of the acceleration. That generally makes your life easier. Net force in the x direction. There's only one of them. Acceleration, I could write it in terms of velocity like this. All right. Then I go back and look at what I was given for the rotational velocity. I was given a rotations per minute. So it's going to take a little bit of work to find out what that V is. And in fact, I don't even think it's the, the preferred way to do it here. So I'm going to change this formula a little bit.
And then the next step, I'll put in my reworked formula for the centripetal acceleration um, with the correct angular velocity, correct units, and I'll put in this mu smg for the static friction force. So a little side note here, a couple side calculations, 78 RPMs. I'm just going to go ahead, instead of saying RPM, I'm going to say rotations per minute. Multiplied by one minute for every 60 seconds. Multiplied by 2 pi radians for every rotation. And canceling units, I come out with radians per second, the SI units of angular speed. It gives me 8.17. Again, just following a three sig fig rule. All right, that's omega. Then I want to take a new look at centripetal acceleration. That's V squared over R. But finding V might be a, a, a little bit of work here. I would have to use V equals R omega to get that done. And instead of sort of plugging that in on the fly, I wanted to mention that there's a formula for centripetal acceleration in terms of omega. And all you do is replace V with R omega. And sometimes this one is handy. So I have R squared omega squared over R. So R is cancel. And it turns out A equals R omega squared is a legitimate formula for centripetal acceleration. You should probably know them all. Know how to write it down as V squared over R. Know how to write it down in terms of period know how to write it down in terms of angular velocity. Okay, so I'm going to replace my V squared over R with R omega squared because omega is what I know. And I'm going to replace my static friction force with mu smg. Okay, just applied my new formula for centripetal acceleration. Notice the mass of the bug is irrelevant. And what I'm trying to solve for here is R. And R is the distance at which the bug will actually slip. And I can get a symbolic solution this time. And I'll go ahead and plug in. Mu S is 0.22. G is 9.8. Omega is 8.17. And I get 0 0.0323, well that's, I could call it 3.23 centimeters. So that's the point at which the force required to maintain the centripetal acceleration has exceeded the maximum static friction force and the bug is going to fly off of the disk, start slipping.